Okay, you ready for the thumb? Yes. You know, who invented this? That's a good question. I mean, people will say Larry Graham. I'll go with that. Um, certainly upright bass players have been using a form of that for a long time. Uh, slapping that bass, playing triplets with both hands. You know, it's been around forever. Um, it's like they say, there's nothing new but what's been forgotten, right? Uh, but certainly, uh, Larry Graham, uh, you know, brought it back and all those great bands of the 60s and 70s and Earth Under Fire and man, I mean, it's certainly <clears throat> one of the main things that got me attracted to uh, bass playing when uh, it was in its infancy when I was as, as well, an infant. And um, it is certainly but something that I've studied and followed and am a fan of and have tried to uh, add my own twist to and use it um, in different ways. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a percussive style of playing the bass. It's a way to get a different sound out of the bass. It's a way to uh, different, um, different, you know, tones and tweaks. And, you know, it's mostly associated with funk and R&B music, but it's, it's used in rock. I mean, I used it in rock a lot with uh, when I was playing with Satriani. It's sort of a, a it has, a different pick than attack, that a different attack than a pick, but it has an attack that's different than just playing with your fingers, and um, you know it's just uh, it's something that uh, I've enjoyed that hopefully you'll enjoy. It's obviously a big part of my playing. Assumingly, it's at least some part of why you are here taking this course. So I will do my best to let you on to some secrets. Yes, yeah, so there are many. Boy, from uh, you know Mark King to Larry Johnson, to Freddie Washington, to Stanley Clark, Jeff Berlin, 5G. Uh, man, I mean, again, I remember a day uh, when not everyone played with their thumb and their finger. It was a relatively new thing. I was living uh, in about 1976, I guess. I was living in, uh, on the border of New Hampshire and Vermont. And uh, I saw some, I think James Brown on TV and I, <clears throat> weren't a lot of music stores up there, so I drove down to Nashville, New Hampshire, beautiful Nashville, and uh, picked a bass off the wall and, and the guy had me kicked out of the music store. I thought I was trying to break his bass. Um, but I uh, had a lot of teachers that do it. I mean, Victor Wooten, you know, master, uh, Les Claypool. I mean, so many people have adopted it into so many different styles of music. So. You know, I'm just going to give you the basics. I do want to, we have to preface it that, boy, everybody um, sort of does it differently, right? Like, there's the way that I teach and the way that I do it, and there's ways that I would say, boy, there's no way you can make that happen. And then I, I listen to Robert Trujillo, Trujillo or Flea, and I don't see how they can make it sound like as good as they do when their bass is so low and they're hitting straight down, but they do, right? So there's all, you know, Jimmy Haslett plays his bass upside down and backwards, so... What are you, you going to do? Necessity being the mother of invention. But there are some things that I think are consistent that I can share with you. And again, you know, you're going to have to do some experimenting uh, to find out what works for you. And the main thing is, of course, is that it's got to sound good. How are you going to know when you've got it, when you're doing it correctly? Well, it's when it sounds good and uh, presumably when it doesn't hurt when you play it. So the first thing I guess would say was that, you know, it doesn't really have to be a, a, a heavy, hard motion. It can actually be a very controlled motion. Um, um, it's preferable that way because the funny thing about bass is that, um, you know, often in the heat of the moment, you know, you think that if you play harder or if you hit it harder, it's going to be louder. That's not actually the case. If you play your strings in a nice controlled manner, it might not feel as exciting, but you get a much truer tone, right? Which is why a lot of people opt for in-ears, and it's, when I'm recording, I'll have the bass pretty loud in the mix, uh, so that I'm forced to play sort of lightly, and it just has a much soft, you know, rounder tone than. Right, it gets all clacky if you really hit hard. Um, and a thing to be aware of is, is you know, if, you're, if you strike the string and it hits a pickup and the you know, sound man starts hearing that pop of your 
string hitting the pickup, then you're going to be taken out of the PA immediately. So um, part of the sound of the um, slapping of getting the thumb is uh, the sound of the string hitting the end of the fretboard. So I think one general rule you could say uh, is that the place to, to attack the bass, slap the bass with your thumb is somewhere right around the end of where the fretboard ends, right, in your body. So I leave a, you've got to have the right distance. Uh, there has to be room here between the neck pickup and the end of the neck for you to get your thumb down there. If you're, if you're playing up here on the neck, it's, you're not going to get quite the low end sustain out of it or be able to get your fingers underneath, though I'm sure there are people that do it that way that are amazing. Um, and if you're down too far down here, it just it becomes something else. So that's generally the spot where you're hitting with a thumb. And, and right now, we're just going to talk about the thumb. We'll get into bringing in the pop later. But again, the first thing you want to do is to be able to find a nice, round, full tone out of it. You know, um, and I think the idea is that you're going to hit the string and then get off it, uh, hit the string so it can vibrate and then move out of its way so it can continue to vibrate. So for me, what that entails is hitting this string with the side of my thumb right here and hitting the string, not down, not towards the body, but from the, from the top to the bottom. So I'm striking the side of the string uh, and hitting it with the side of my thumb and then getting past the string so it can ring. And here, you know, I keep my action pretty low, so there's a little bit of fret buzz. That's sort of my tone. That's, of course, your choice when you are, you know, figuring out how you want your tone to be. Um, so it's sort of like, you know, when they talk about in golf, swinging through the ball, it's, it's sort of that concept where if I'm, if I'm going to be slapping using my thumb to hit the E string, I'm aiming for the A string. And I, I intend to rest my, thing, my thumb on that A string. And to get there, the E string just happens to be in the way and it gets hit. Converse same, that if I want to slap my A string, I'm hitting through it. I'm trying to end, have it end up resting on the D string. So again, you hear the sound. If you hit straight down on it, there's a little waffling from the side, from the sound of the pickups getting hit, and um, you do risk again pushing the string down on the pickup. Um, and again, a light motion is fine. And um, you know, I try to keep my hand loose, especially if we get into. I think if you're trying to force that, you're going to really, you know, freeze up your arm and your shoulder. And again, we want to always be relaxed and uh, keep breathing while we play. And breathing is very important. I highly recommend it, especially when you're playing.